All right, if you got your Bible this morning, I want you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, we're going to be in verse 14. So if you got your Bible, I want you to do that. Maybe you didn't bring a Bible this morning. You can grab your device, your, your phone, or your tablet. If you're watching with us online, the temptation is always, well, I'll just listen, I'll just follow along. No, no, no. We want you to grab your Bible as well, and we want you to go along with these passages that we want to study God's Word together as a church family, whether you're here or whether you're not here. I was thinking about this past uh, Christmas. Many of y'all know uh, the story of me. Before I came here to Memorial, uh, I was putting myself through school by working down in the French Quarter. And some of y'all know some stories that I've told about working down in the French Quarter. And, you know, one of the things is that when it comes to the holidays, you've got to be there when the people are there. And so typically, not so much this year, but typically during the holidays, that is the best time to work because that's where people are down. They're trying to buy souvenirs, you know, maybe a last minute uh, Christmas gift or something like that. And I discovered something while I was working down there, working during the holidays, you would think that more people would spend money on Christmas Eve, don't you? They're trying to get those last minute Christmas gifts. They're trying to, you know, they're, they're trying to buy for someone. Or if, if you've ever gone out on, you know, Christmas Eve and you see something trying to buy for yourself, you know, oh, I'll just get a Christmas gift for myself. You would think that a lot of that spending would take place on Christmas Eve. But here's what I discovered. Are you ready for this? The greatest Spending day for, for me wasn't necessarily on Black Friday or, you know, Christmas Eve or anything like that. Are you ready for this? The biggest day, the biggest sales day was the day after Christmas. The day after Christmas. And you can probably imagine why. Because on the day after Christmas, everyone has received their Christmas money. And for them, it's this I got a euphoric feeling if you've ever had that Christmas money. And it's always fun to go out. And, you know, certainly people want you to spend their money on the things that you want and all that. But, you know, in the business that I was in, I was kind of in, a, I was in the jewelry business. Sometimes people would come and, you know, we would actually negotiate out a price. They would throw out a price. I would throw out, a, you know, a price. And sometimes we would come together in the middle just depending on, on what it was. But what I discovered was on the day after Christmas, they didn't even want to negotiate. It was wonderful. You could throw out the highest prices and they, hey, it's not the money that I have. You know, I was given this. And so they didn't even want to negotiate. And it was one of the best days of the year. You could almost see their eyes roll up in their head and that, you know, euphoric feeling come all over them. And as time went on, I began to think about, you know, what if, what if the folks that came by or what if it, you know, when, when you're, you have your Christmas money or bonus or whatever, you know, that, that you have, you know, what if as a child growing up, if I had just taken half, half of that money and invested it? Have you ever thought about that? Now try to explain that to your 10 year old or, you know, your seven year old or whatever. It's the, the, the concept is, it, it just boggles their mind to understand what even in investing that, that it means. But, but to think through, man, if that Christmas money could double or triple or even more over time, what you would have. And here's what I want us to see, and here's where I want us to go, not just on today, but throughout the course of this year, is that God has given us, not just money, but He has given us our lives as an investment. I mean, let, let's think about this. Even before the fall of man, even before Adam and Eve ate the fruit, do you remember God puts Adam in the garden, and He doesn't give him a hammock, Okay, that's not there in the Bible. It doesn't give him a, you know, a lazy chair or anything like that or a sofa, nothing like that. The Bible says that God put Adam in the garden to work it and to care for it. That God was making an investment. Now, certainly he had given Adam some, some leadership, but even before the fall, that God was making an investment and that he was wanting to see that grow. As believers, we also invest in the kingdom of God. That is the purpose for which you were created. 
to invest in the kingdom of God and to see it grow. And we do that by sharing the gospel. We do that by worshiping. We do that by studying together that you are making an investment in yourself, an investment in others by studying through prayer, through serving others. I think a lot of times what happens is that we look at our Christian life, that we look at our Christian walk and the things that, that God calls us to do and we almost look at that like eating our vegetables. Well, I know I'm supposed to do it, but I can get back on the wagon if I get off. That kind of thing. And instead of seeing those things as imperative, and here's what I see and that I don't want to see in this upcoming year, is that so much of our life is wasted. Like Christmas money that's blown on things that won't last. And so if you've got your notes this morning, I want to talk to you about investment. I want to talk to you about investing your life. I want to talk to you about investing the resources that, that God has given you. And so here's what, just right out of the gate, that I want you to write down was this note. What is an investment, Pastor Dan? What is it as, it as it talks about the Christian life? Here it is. I want you to fill in the blanks. An investment is when you set aside resources. It's when you set aside resources. And, and if I could just kind of start right there. Many times when you set aside these resources, it is sacrificial. Think about this. If you set aside a certain portion of your money or your time, you are setting it aside. That means you don't get to blow it right then and there. In many cases, it is a sacrifice. So you are setting aside resources, and then there's all different types of resources that God gives us. He gives us time. The richest person on the face of the planet and the poorest person on the face of the planet still have 24 hours in a day. You, it's how you use that. Are you using that for the kingdom of God? So many times we have so much that is, that is squandering for your attention. Think about this. If you're in the business world today, then you know one of the greatest resources that you are trying to get from people isn't necessarily money. It's their attention. Billboards, magazines, social media, all the things, television, everything is trying to get your attention so that you will give it your time. And so for us that we say, you know what, I want to make sure that I am investing my time. Then you got your talent. So much talent is in this room. So much talent is watching with us online that God has given you incredible gifts all across this room. And then to be able to invest your finances for the purpose of achieving a goal. Purpose is not just to invest so that you can, you know, feel good about yourself. The, the, the purpose is to, to reach a goal. And with that being said, that's where I want us to begin right here in verse 14 of Matthew chapter 25. Now, what's been happening up to this point? Jesus has been kind of uh, preparing his disciples and help them understand, hey guys, no one knows when I'm coming back. No one knows when the end is going to ha happen. But here's the deal. I want you to be ready. And there's a couple different parables in here, but the one that we're going to focus in on today starts in verse 14. And I want you to follow along with me as I read this out loud. It says in verse 14, For it is just like a man about to go on a journey, and he called his own servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one, he gave five talents. To the other, two talents. And to the other, one talent. Depending on each one's ability. And then he went on his journey. And so we understand this. This is Jesus. Okay? Jesus is the master. He's the one that's giving the talents. And he's going on his journey. He's in heaven right now. And then it talks about the ones that he gave those different talents. It says immediately, verse 16, the man who had received five talents went, put them to work, and earned five more. In the same way, the man who with two, uh, two earned two more. 
And then in verse 18, it says, but the man who had received one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. In verse 19, it says, After a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them, and the man who had received five talents approached and presented five more talents, so ten total, and said, Master, you gave me five talents. I've earned five more. And here's our theme verse for the year. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. A few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Share in your master's joy. And then he goes to the next one. The man with two talents also approached. He said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I've earned two more talents. And his master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Share in your master's joy. And then the one who had received one talent also approached and said, Master, I, I know you. You're a harsh man. Look at him. He's, a, he's accusing him. Reaping where you haven't sown and gathering where you haven't scattered seed. So I was afraid. And I went off and I hid your talent in the ground. See, you have what is yours. Now, this wasn't an uncommon practice where people, you got to remember, certainly you did have banks, and he'll mention that here in just a second, but this wasn't an uncommon practice if you had something of value and you didn't want anyone to steal, especially if there was a battle that took place or someone came and, you know, burned your home down. We, we really don't have these types of situations that happen to us, but you got the Romans that come in, you have history of different armies coming down, and so if you didn't want something to happen to your valuables, certainly that you could bury them in the ground battles take place all that kind of stuff then your family could come back and dig it up and and see if they they could find it so so certainly that this isn't um that it didn't have it happened uh commonly but for him he was meant to invest it and then in verse 26 the master replies him he says you evil lazy servant if you knew that I reap where I haven't sown and gather where I haven't scattered, then you should have deposited my money with the bankers and I would have received my money back with interest when I returned. So take the talent from him and give it to the one who has 10. Look at this. For everyone who has will be given and he, who, and he will have more than enough. But from the one who does not have even what he has will be taken away from him. And throw this, man, I hope we never hear this, good for nothing servant into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So God expects an investment with our life. This is not negotiable. This is not optional. This is something that God expects for each and every one of us. And so if you got your notes this morning, I want us to just kind of pick this passage apart very quickly, very quickly as we look at this. The first thing that I want us to see is that investments require, write this down, a portion. A portion. So here we've got the different amount of talents that are given to each one. Now, with you and me, I mean, sometimes when we think of a talent, we might think of that, that being like a coin or something like that, okay? One was given five coins, one was given two coins, one was given one coin. But actually, look at me, there is nothing further from the truth. In fact, a talent, are you ready for this, was worth 20 years wages, 20 years. So when he gives one five talents, he's giving him the equivalent of a hundred years wages. This is a lot of money. Now later on, he says, well, you've been faithful with a few things. Well, man, that's not as few as I thought it was, okay? But that's what I want us to see, that God has given us a portion and God has given you your life. And your life is no small matter, I want you to get that. A talent was no small matter, and your life is no small matter. We talk about time, mentioned time earlier. For some of you that you've been a Christian for many years, and so your, time, your talent might look like 20 years, 40 years, or even more. And so God has given you an incredible amount of time that you have been saved. And so here's my question. As we move into 2021, listen to me. How 
Are you going to invest your time? I can't invest it for you. How are you going to invest your time in 2021? For some of you that God has given you incredible talent, not this kind of talent, but like the talents that God has given you. Now, there's talents all over this room of teaching, serving, encouraging, giving, shepherding, administering. And those are just, those are just the things that, that we see in the Bible, the, the different giftings that the Bible talks about. But all over this room, you got people that are incredible in music and art and cooking. God bless you, you know, that when I get to savor your food, it's, it's amazing. You have all different types of talents across this room. My desire for you in 2021, don't waste your God-given talents. Use them not to build your own kingdom. Use them to build His kingdom. He has gifted you in incredible ways. And that He also gives us a portion of our finances. My uh, daughter, I was mentioning Christmas money that, that came earlier. My daughter got, got some Christmas money. Uh, this season, and so came in, and, and again, that euphoria, I could see it, it was all over her, it's more money than she's ever had in her entire life, you know, and, it, and it's, you know, nothing that would pay any bill for me, but, you know, for her, man, it's just so exciting, and we had a conversation around the dinner table, as she was, you know, opening the cards and things like that, and so as she's opening those cards, and so as we were, I knew that I was going to be talking about what I was going to be mentioning today, and I looked at her, and I said, do you realize everything that you've been given is actually God's? He's just entrusted it to you. And then I began to talk about giving a portion of her Christmas money to the Lord. And then you could kind of see, you could kind of see the soberness come over her face. But this was given to me. And so we had to instruct her and say, look, everything that you've ever had actually belongs to God's. All your finances, all your resources, your car, your house, you know, whatever that, that you may own, all of those things belong to God. And so God gives us a portion. And so the second thing that I want us to see is that, is that investments require producing, okay? So God doesn't give you a portion so you can just come and sit on it. Look at with me in verse uh, 16 here. In verse 16, it says, Immediately, the man who had received five talents went and put them to work and earned five more. So, so it doesn't say that he went out and just spent them frivolously, okay? There had to be some planning involved, and I would encourage you. Benjamin Franklin said, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. And so I would encourage you that as you go into this upcoming year to have a plan, get together, get some paper, get a whiteboard, get something so that you can sit down and say, okay, I'm going to look over my year so that I don't squander my year. I want to produce with this year. And so it says that, that he took his talent and he put it to work. Okay, and one of the things that I want to encourage you is that he says immediately. Now, investing is all about the timing. If you've ever done any investing for yourself, particularly with money or anything like that, investing is all about timing. Let me tell you how this worked in, in my life. Uh, years ago, when I was taking classes at seminary, I had some classes at 8 o'clock. I had to be in New Orleans East at the seminary at 8 o'clock. And many times I would have a test or a quiz. I mean, first thing that you walk in the door, boom, they're handing you that quiz quiz as you walk in the door. And so what I discovered is timing is everything. Have you ever tried to get out uh, on, on I-10 and go anywhere at 750? Okay, it doesn't work that well. And what I discovered was is that I needed to be in the car by seven o'clock, probably no later. I need to be in that car no later than seven o'clock and start heading down that way. Why? Because if I left any later, I was going to get caught in traffic. Okay. And many times what would happen is I would get, I would get in the car early. I wouldn't get caught in traffic. Well, then I'm there at school early. I would sit in my car and I would study for my quiz all the way up until about 7.55, no distractions, right there in the car, and then I would get out, and then I would walk in, and I would take those quizzes or those tests. And so here's what I want to encourage you to do. Getting started 
early. And that's why I want to encourage you to think through it and to plan it. There, there are some times that, that you will put things on hold and you say, well, I'm going to wait until, until when? When, when are you going to wait until? I think the greatest, I think that many of us would be in, in a whole different place if we didn't procrastinate when it comes to the things of God. The next thing that I want you to write down is that investments require patience. They require patience. Look with me in verse 19. It says this, after a short time, a medium amount of time. No, 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 no. Look in verse 19. After a long time, time the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them here's what i want you to understand that your walk with god is not a sprint it is a marathon it is a marathon I uh, see sometimes that, that uh, if, you, if you do any investing, I'll, 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 can I let my nerd hang out for just for, just for a second, all right? If you do any amount of investing, you'll, you might know what I'm talking about. There's these things called pump and dumps. Have you heard of this? Pump and dumps are when you're investing, particularly in a stock or something like that, and it's when it's being kind of manipulated and everyone's buying, and it's not that everyone believes in the value of the company, everyone's just being greedy, okay? And they just want their money to grow, 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 and that's what happens. They are pumping it up. They're pumping up that particular stock. But then what happens is Somebody sells it. It's almost like this chain reaction. Someone sells and somebody else sells and then everybody starts selling. And I have watched some of these stocks drop to half their value within a matter of 15 minutes that took days to build up. Here's what I've seen is that God does. He wants you to start. He wants you to get going. But a lot of times we think that this is a sprint and we, we start out in the new year and we're like, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the entire book of Genesis on day one. And I would just encourage you, take, take it easy. Grow, enjoy it, let it marinate in your heart. And let, man, that you, can let it, that you can let it begin to start something slowly. What happens is, if you go in too quick, what can happen to do too much is that you can actually burn yourself out. And the last thing that I want to see across anyone in this room or anyone that's watching online is for someone to say, you know what? At one point in time, I was so passionate. I was so on fire for Jesus. But now I'm just so burned out. Our walk with Jesus is a marathon, not a sprint. Your dedication to the church is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Okay, And so here's what I want to ask in the short term and in the long term. Do you have a plan for how you're going to study the Bible this year? Do you have a plan for how you're going to deal with sin? You know you're going to be tempted this year, right? It's not just going to, and you know, January 1st is going to come, oh, I've got everything done. How are you going to deal with sin in your life? How Do you have plans for your marriage, for your parenting, or are you just going to wing it? And so for us, that we say, you know what? That we're going to invest our resources, our finances, our time, and our talents. And then here's what happens. Here's what I want you to And we'll move really quickly through this. Is that there's a kingdom investment yield. And here's what I want you to see. What do kingdom investments yield? What's the purpose? What's the goal? The first thing that I want you to write down is that they yield a heavenly praise. You know, a lot of times when we talk about praise, don't we talk about praise like us praising God? God, you're awesome. God, you're amazing. God, as we've been singing his praises even this morning, you're glorious, you're good. I love you, Lord. A lot of times when we think of praise, but here's what I want you to see. It's in our theme verse right here in verse 21. The master said to him, are you ready for this? He's, he's speaking to us. He's speaking to the one who's been faithful, the one who's done a good investment. Well done, good and faithful servant. What do you want to hear at the end of your life? Made all the money in the world, passed it down to my kids, did all that. What, what, what do you want to hear? Had a great time, I've done a lot of funerals. Oh, they had such a good time with their life. What, what's your goal? What, 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 what's that statement that you want when people are speaking about your funeral? 
for us that we could say, well done, that we hear the praise from God. Now, this is interesting. The second thing that the kingdom investment yields is a heavenly project. Now, this one I don't even fully understand myself, okay? But I'm going to do my, my best. Look at this. In verse 21, it says, Well done, good and faithful servant. Now, look at, look at it. You were faithful over a few things. Huh, five talents, 100 years of, uh, of work. You were faithful over a few things. That's what God considers a few things in light of eternity. Now, look at this. I will put you in charge of many things. Now, this is a concept that I don't think that a lot of us understand. When we get to heaven one day, we're not just going to be playing harps, okay, floating on clouds, waving at each other. I want you to understand, when we get to heaven, the same way that Adam had responsibility in paradise, in the garden, you and I will have responsibility in paradise, in heaven, based on how we lived our life. Are you tracking with me? That you will be given a heavenly project. You will be given, look at me, heavenly responsibility. And I don't even know what it looks like. How you will serve in heaven. Or how I will serve in heaven. But you will be given responsibility in heaven based on how you invested your life here on earth. And I want you to think about that as we move into 2021. That, that what I do yields a reward, yields a eternal reward. Remember, we're not saved by our good works, but we're saved for good works. And God wants us to yield those rewards. And he will, he will give us that responsibility based on how we lived our lives. And then the final thing is the heavenly prize. The kingdom investment yields a heavenly prize. You see right here at the very end of verse 21, he says, come on in, share your master's joy. In James chapter 1, also we see this in Revelation chapter 2, the Bible talks about the crown of life that God, has, that God gives, the crown of life that God, when we go into heaven one day, that man, that he's going to give us that crown of life and that man, that we will share in his joy in heaven. It's an incredible time for us. No pain, no sadness, no pandemics, you know, none of that kind of stuff that, man, when you walk in, you are entirely taken care of, you are entirely protected, and, and that God gives you that heavenly prize. When I was growing up, I ran cross country. But really, you could see this in all different types of sports. When we would get ready to go to a, a track meet or cross country meet, there was this mental game that you played. And let me tell you, the mental game before you did any type of sport was just as important as getting out there and performing. The mental game. If you've ever grown up and you played sports, I mean, I know we got some soccer players in here. I know we got some football fans and football players in here growing up. And, and there's this, there's this expression. You know it and I know it. It goes, leave it all out on the field. Leave it all out on the field. Well, what does that mean? Leave all your equipment out on the field and don't bring in? No, 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 no. That's not what it means. When it says leave it, when someone has told you leave it all out on the field, what do they mean? They say mentally go out saying that I'm going to do my absolute best. I'm not going to hold anything back. And while we certainly need to pace ourselves, I want to encourage you in 2021 to leave it all on the field. Can I tell you one last thing before I pray? And that's the fact that even God himself makes investments. Not just asking us to invest, he makes investments. Think about this. 2,000 years ago, he sent his one and only son, his greatest investment that's not even worth 100 years, well more than 100 years of work. He sent his one and only son because he loves you and he cares about you, and he wants to make an investment in you and in your eternity. And that, that son came, and he was, came to earth, royalty in heaven, sacrificed, came down sacrificial, was born in a manger. That's what we've been celebrating. Lived that perfect life, lived a perfect homeless life, might I add, 
Son of Man has no place to lay his head. And then, ultimately, that he was sacrificed on the cross and was resurrected from the dead. An investment in you. And to think, he did that. Are you giving him that return on his investment? Thank you.